Hello folks and welcome back to the Top 10 Actual Facts. This time I want to explore one of the most misunderstood of the dangerous creatures on this planet. No, not the chipmunk, but the bear. Today you can finally answer one of life's most philosophical questions. Does a bear really sh** in the woods? And as an added bonus, I will try to sneak in as many bear puns as I can to make the average dad happy. But just barely. Number 10. Bear Family All bears are carnivorous mammals that reside in the family Ursidae, and not Bernstein. Though their story would have been much cooler if they were carnivorous. There are eight extant members which include the Black, Brown, Polar, and Giant Panda. That's right, I said the Giant Panda. Well, some of you are probably saying, wait, it's related to raccoons. But nay, I say. When molecular studies were done, it was found that it is actually a true bear that diverged off the ancestor of Ursidae around 19 million years ago, making this the most basal member of the family and considered a living fossil today. I know this shocking revelation may prove to be unbearable for some. Number 9. Bear Diets Sticking with that last point, the giant panda is the only species that is completely herbivorous. Did I say that right? Herbivorous. Because its digestive system is still that of a carnivore, it has to eat between 20 to 30 pounds of bamboo shoots every day, which means it has to poop up to 40 times a day. At least they don't like the fiber. On the opposite end of the spectrum, however, the polar bear, or Ursus maritimus, eats another kind of plant called seal meat. If the polar bear has a favorite vegetable, it's probably bacon. While the polar bear is completely carnivorous and the giant panda is completely herbivorous, all other bears have an omnivore. All other bears. Ah. While the polar bear is completely carnivorous and the giant panda is completely herbivorous, all other bears have an omnivore. God. All other bears have an omnivorous diet, which means they'll eat anything to acquire the bear necessities. Number eight: bear sizes. The sizes of the bear vary greatly and they are sexually dimorphic with the males typically being larger. The smallest of the species is the sun bear, found in Southeast Asia. Because of its small size of 55 to 143 pounds, the sun bear is quite adept at climbing trees. In contrast, polar bears don't climb trees because larger males can weigh up to 1,500 pounds. And well, there are no trees in the Arctic. The largest on record weighed a bathroom scale crushing 2,209 pounds and stood 11 feet 2 inches tall its poops being the size of the sun bear. All the other bears fall in between this range with one exception. The subspecies of brown bear known as the Kodiak bear from Alaska can rival the average mass of the polar bear. One specimen weighed in at 2,400 pounds and another stood at 11 feet tall. Both the Kodiak and the polar bear are by far the largest terrestrial predators alive today. Which brings me to the next fact. Number seven, there was an even larger bear. While the Polar and Kodiaks are living large today, they had ancestors disappointingly named the Short-Faced Bear. They were given this name because their snouts were disproportionately shorter than that of extant bears roaming the world today. Even though scientists forgot to give this animal a cool name, its size did not disappoint. In particular, the ancient Arctotheriums weighed up to 20, whoa god. In particular, the ancient Arctotheriums weighed between 2,167 and 4,500 pounds and stood up to 14 feet tall, so they totally could have dunked on LeBron. You might have noticed that the legs of these bears are a bit long. While some have speculated that they were prehistoric fashion models, some scientists actually believe that they were designed for economy of motion. This means that the short-faced bear was a roamer and didn't just stick to one location as its long stride meant it could cover long distances across South America more effectively during the Pleistocene Epoch. Number 6. The short-faced bear has a living relative. The spectacle bear is the only surviving family member related to the ancient and massive short-faced bear. Like the ancient Arctotheriums, they too are from South America. They are so named because they have a contrasting light coloring on their chest and face with some specimens looking as though they are wearing glasses. I don't see this either, and think the ones that named them are the ones that need glasses. Sometimes called Andean bears, which is a much better name, they are arboreal like the black bears and sun bear. Males can weigh between 220 and 440 pounds and do not really pose a threat to humans. 
Well, one person was killed, but that's because he shot him. So I totally understand the response. You can find them dwelling in the mountain forts of South America, and they might just give you a glimpse into the past about what their ancient ancestors may have looked like. Number 5. Constellations For those who like to peek out from the polluted skies at night, you can watch Ursa Major and Ursa Minor in the Northern Hemisphere. The history of these is a bit murky because they have been recognized since prehistory, which plays into the significance of how bears are viewed amongst humans. The first recorded mention of them was by the 2nd century astronomer Ptolemy, who listed them among his 48 constellations in his Almagest, calling them Arctos Megali and Arctos Mitra, which I hope I pronounced right. Ursa Major in particular is believed to have been associated with the bear for as far back as 13,000 years in the Upper Pleistocene. I got these lovely images in the detailed history from ianridpath.com. For those wanting to take a deep dive into a bit of astronomy, this is a great place to go. Number 4. Bear Attacks You'd think that danger from bears scales with size, but the truth is that it is a little more species dependent. Contrary to some belief, the American black bears are not the most aggressive, and the number of attacks in North America is attributed to the fact that they just far outnumber the brown bears. The issue with the brown bears is that because of their size, attacks are, of course, more serious. Just like with polar bears. But between 1989 and 1994, there were 48 deaths and 687 maulings. And this isn't from the Kodiak or polar bear. This is from another species of bear. In one state. India's sloth bear. Number 3. The sloth bear. Given the dangerous reputation of the sloth bear, you'd think it's deserved based on its diet. Native to India, these cranky bastards eat termites, ants, and fruit. When you look at some of its adaptations like its sickle claws, long narrow snout, freaky sucky lips, you can see they share a lot in common with anteaters. These are a medium sized species with males ranging between 176 pounds and 320 pounds. The sloth bear has an unusually long and shaggy coat of fur, which might explain its pissy attitude given that it lives in such a hot ass place. Another unique note about these bears is that they are the most vocal species when they are mating. Really Number 2. Bear Bread I'm sticking with a sloth bear because this one deserves its own separate fact. Bear bread isn't bread baked by bears or loaves made out of bears. While both kinds would be interesting, the sloth bear does something quite a bit different. When feeding their cubs, their moms regurgitate half-digested wood apples, jackfruit, and honeycomb. They let this hard into a dark yellow bread-like thing, and from which they then give to their cubs. And that's not the interesting part. The interesting part is that this is a delicacy among some of the locals. Before you get all judgmental, remember that you do the exact same shit with honey, which is pretty much the same process. And if a bear hands you a piece of bread, are you really going to tell it no? Just know that it might maul you when you do because it's a sloth bear. Number 1. The Russian bear is not from Russia. I know I just heard half the world gasp. No, the symbolic animal of Russia did not come from Russia themselves, but from other countries as a way to portray Russia. And it was usually not in a flattering manner. Even the history of their coat of arms is devoid of any ursin. From the grandiose and impressive to the I'm not even trying anymore. It wasn't until the more recent 20th century when Russia became more accepting of using the bear as a mascot, seeing it more as a symbol of great strength other than the clumsiness it was originally meant to portray. And plus, it loves Americans. Well, I hope you all enjoyed learning more about this fascinating animal. Subscribe and like, and comment down below to let me know what animals I should do next. Uh, bear pun inserted here. the bears stupid fool you should have known